This is Entrepreneurs Get Visible, the podcast for people who want more impact, influence, and income. I'm Anna Parker Naples, and I'll be sharing with you proven methods from leading entrepreneurs that help you get visible as an authority in your field. Because anything's possible when you get visible. So welcome to the show, Jules. Really lovely to have you here. And for us to really get into the concept of not selling to your customers and building those relationships, because that's what we're here to talk about today. So I'd love for you to share with with my listeners a little bit about you and what you do, Jules. Yes. Hello, Anna. So nice to meet you at last. Um, I've been following you for some time and we have never actually really met no, we're only a few junctions away on the A5 as well. So we are, all those neighbours. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, my passion is sales, but it is, as you say, it's about selling from a human perspective, I think, as opposed to it being that horrible salesy scripted stuff, you know, and I find that's quite repelling to most people because they've all been sold too badly. Mm. So I've had 30 years in the sales arena in lots of different industries and sectors. And I've run my own business, which I took into Dragon's Den some years ago. Ooh. So, Okay, know. what was that? We've got to hear the goss on. You can't drop that one in and not go into this <laughs> in more detail. Who, Which dragons did you present to? Okay, so it was uh, Series 2. So I had Rachel Elner. I had Duncan Ballantyne. I had Doug Richards. Theo Pafitis and Peter Jones. So you might recognize some of those because it was a long time ago. And Theo and Peter were bidding against each other to invest in my business. So I was really blown away. But it was a party plan business selling baby products because nobody else was doing it. So I suddenly thought when I'd had my son, he was three months old. I thought I'd start a business because that's what you do when you've got a three-month-old baby. So, yes. I, I'm, I'm just as bonkers. I start businesses when babies are tiny. It seems like the best idea in the world at the time. Yeah. Looking back, I do think that was possibly not the best idea, but <laughs> it's all part of growth. Yeah, it is. It is. So that was a great experience. I got investment from Peter in the end. We shook hands, but I never did the deal. So then, and there's a whole story behind it, which is actually in my TEDx talk. So um, mm. if anyone wants to catch up on that, that's So when did you do your time. TEDx and where did you do it? I did my TEDx in 2018. And that was in Brighton. So there was 1,600 people there for that, which was um, wonderful. It was in the Brighton Dome. So it was a fabulous venue. Beautiful venue. Yeah, I was very lucky. I was really lucky. And I got a last minute call on it because somebody was actually poorly. And then the guy who curated the Brighton TEDx, he'd been in touch with me and he knew me. And he just literally messaged me and said, you've got seven days, are you in? And I said, yes. (laughs) Yeah, because why would you say no? Why would you say no? Yeah. So. And in a way, actually, I think because you have to do it at an accelerated speed, all those decisions are just made for you. You know, The things you would have procrastinated over for weeks and weeks and weeks. I think you're right, Anna. And the thing is about Dragon's Den, I had two weeks notice and I was in front of the Dragon's filming and then I had a week's notice and I was doing a TEDx. So I think that's how I work best. Last yeah, minute A little bit stuff. of pressure. <laughs> that's it, yeah. <laughs> the show has to go on. If you've got the deadline, it's got to happen. Yeah. So talk talk us through then. So you started to tell me off, off um, air, off camera, off video, off mic, a little bit about where your concept of selling and not selling has come from and I sort of said to you don't go too far into that now we'll save that for the show so Mm. you have this concept around selling that is not about selling that is about loving your customers talk us through what that means for you and where it came from yeah very much and it was from my dad if I'm honest I, I lost my dad at the end of 2015 miss him terribly but he left a huge legacy with me and, and a big impact that he had on my life was that he was kind of my hero so everything he did I watched even from a small child and I grew up in a sweet shop on the local shopping precinct you know in my day that's where everyone went to do their shopping. everyone went it yeah. was the I used to love the blue pips that was yes. my favourite, cola pips. <laughs> yeah. And so he had all the pick and mix, the, the newspapers, the cigarettes, because obviously back in there, those days everybody smoked. So he'd have everything ready on the counter for, for the customers when they came in. He knew their names, their families' names. And for me, I, when I watched it, I just thought, my goodness, isn't this lovely? And my dad loves his customers. And I felt that lovely energy around how he did business. So I think for me, that was always the way I did business. Even if I was trained differently, that's what I actually went out and did. 
And I wanted to create a methodology around sales that was that, which is when I came up with Live It, Love It, Sell It, which is actually my business name as well as my book, as well as like the whole methodology. It's a journey. It's a sales road trip, as I call it. And I think that works because everybody wants to be made to feel special, valued, noticed and important. Yeah. Definitely. All those things. And when you get those things right, you're building relationships, you're not selling. Yeah, completely. And then you're understanding your customers because you're sort of in their world as opposed to sitting on the outside, guessing what they might want. You know, so there's, there's a lot of stuff I do around human connection, you know, around actually really listening and stepping into the world of the customer, you know, because that's, that's quite special to do that properly. And that human element is something that feeds through into your podcast. Thank you. Yes. So that's, <laughs> tell, what's the name of your show? Well, it's called The Human Conversation, which was kind of the logical thing to call it. So it's living it, love it, sell it, the human conversation. And I started Anna, but I just wanted to chat to people because I love it. That's what I love doing. And so all of a sudden this podcast evolved and, and now it's a pretty much a weekly thing. And I have really great guests who are ordinary, and I mean mm. that in the best way, yes. entrepreneurs who are running businesses. So they're real people. And I, I love that. And I think so often, what, that's one of the things I love about podcasting is that so often we see a curated version of of what someone's telling us on social media in the images that they put out there. And of course that works and it's intentional, but a podcast allows us to tell our stories, to be real, to be vulnerable, to have the highs, the lows, to be laughing one minute, to be in tears and be touched, to tell those stories where we've lost someone or something's failed or and we've been crushed by it. And actually that is also not only how we get to know our other, our customers, but how they get to know us. Yeah. yeah, very much. I think people want people to be real to Diana, even on social media. More and more now we're starting to tell our stories properly, you know, in that real, real way. That vulnerability is powerful if it's not too much of it, as long as there's a taste of it so that people feel we're not infallible and, and you know, bionic, as it were. And that doesn't mean doing Facebook Lives when you've just had your argument with your husband and you know, telling warts and all. That's not the same thing. That's not what we're talking about here. No, no, it's not that. It's about saying that you did struggle at some point, but also then bringing the hope behind it. That's that's even more powerful, isn't it? And, and, and I think the TEDx for me was where I was able to tell my story, but then bring it back to the audience and say to the audience, but look, this is you guys. This is a message for you. What are you doing next? And I finish it saying, is it going to be one day or is this day one? And that's the thing people write to me about. It's really interesting. You know? So what what then do you see as a result for clients of yours when they get this right? Where do you take them from and where do they go to? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. And I take them from a place of not loving sales, feeling perhaps a little bit insecure, thinking people are not going to buy what they've got to sell. They're not good enough. They're the same as everyone else to actually feeling like they are a very unique person. There's no other person on the planet like them. And so that belief in their experience, the reason why they're doing what they're doing, and all of that then allows this this place of, gosh, yeah, I've got this. And then, sorry, my dog's a bar. That's all right. Dogs are welcome on this podcast. My dog Oscar has a habit of clawing at the door or barking outside or just at anyone walking past generally. <laughs> as we wrote. So don't worry about those. That's perfectly normal. And as I say to people, podcasting isn't perfect. Podcasting is real. And the more comfortable you can be in your podcasting space with the person you're interviewing or being a guest, that you just don't have things to worry about. I see so many people, you know, come on, if they're not so experienced being into it, absolutely panic that they're not perfect. And the the thing is, you guys will probably remember, oh, I remember Jules. Yeah, her, her dog was barking. Yeah. You're going to know that. And you're going to think, what kind of dog has Jules got? So you automatically build a connection because we've talked about that. Yeah, it's, a, it's postman time, Anna. That's postman that's what time. It is. Yeah. Well, my dog thinks <laughs> every person who walks down our street is a postman. So, And he likes to keep guard just outside my studio door, which is very helpful. Very helpful. <laughs> so then how has this then led to you developing and growing the business that you have? 
have now? Well, I think obviously a lot of it comes from your own clients. You start to really understand what they need from you. So then you review and refine the offering that you have. And and also expanding it out now into corporates for me was a big thing because I was predominantly coaching and working with entrepreneurs, which was fabulous. But also I knew I had the corporate experience to work with a sales team. So I created another brand, if you like, inside the Live It, Love It, Sell It brand, which was a unique human proposition the UHP instead of the USP because for me again it was all about this isn't about widgets and and sort of these tangible things it's actually about people so the biggest asset we have is us so a lot of that corporate training for me focuses on the individuals I have in a sales team so so what when we're talking about this when people are getting the selling wrong because they're going at it like it's a sale I think actually that's where a lot of the worries about not being good enough that I've got, I'm no different to anybody else. And the the whole imposter syndrome rears its ugly head because if you feel uncomfortable with selling the service, the package, the whatever, the product that you have to offer, who's going to want to buy from you when it's a hard sell? The things that come easiest to sell are the things that you sell from the heart because you fully believe in it, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. If I believe in it, um, it's much more likely my customer is going to believe in it too. They'll feel that. Yeah. That will come in everything I do. This is the other thing I think that's so important for anybody who is listening and they're, they're thinking, oh, sales isn't my thing. Mm-hmm. It's a consistency of that ongoing belief and love and passion for what you do that becomes infectious and memorable. And that's what sales is about, that connection. And I think having, you know, like you, I've run several businesses and done several things over the years. And I know for me that when I've gone in the wrong direction, and it's never wrong because you learn and you grow and you develop and you evolve, you kind of know in the pit of your stomach whether you're actually comfortable talking about the thing you're comfortable about. And I know that there's been big changes for me that you know, at one point I'm I'm doing one thing and then I've I've kind of grown out of love with it. And that's okay. It's okay to admit to yourself I'm not in love with what I'm doing. And it's okay to start to find ways to find something you are passionate about. It's mm. one of the reasons that, you know, for me, I could talk about the mindset stuff really easily because it's changed my life. I literally wouldn't be walking, I wouldn't be doing anything. I'd just be sat in a wheelchair as a bit of a mess, to be honest. And I can sell I could talk about transformation because it really matters to me. And I have those stories. And I can tell you the dark stuff. Mm. And equally with the podcast membership that I have now, I can talk about the audio because again, I have lived and breathed this stuff. I've been in the trenches working out how to do this. And so it's it's not that I'm having to pretend. I'm not having to put on that armor of confidence. It's actually being at peace and confident with what you know and what you trust and what you feel. Mm, Yeah, beautifully put. So for people then who do struggle with the sales, what would your advice be to them to try and turn this around? Well, the, the whole live it, love it, sell it journey starts with you. So it absolutely has to be where you start. So challenging the fear you have around selling, where does that come from? What does it really look like? And actually dealing with your why. Why do you do what you do? Why do you run that business? As you've just said, are you in love with it? And if you are fabulous, that is going to carry you through. And then the connection to this ideal customer. And this isn't about where they live, how much they earn, how many kids they've got. This is their emotional state and connecting on an emotional level to them. And then that way, you've kind of got all of that lovely substance and foundation that gives you the confidence to say, right, I'm just going to go out, be visible, have a consistent message, and I'm just going to be there all the time. And what happens is people remember you and they come to you. It comes back. And it's like you are you become a magnet as opposed to having to go out and find Mm. and fetch, which is old school sales. We're now actually drawing people in to attract to us. It's interesting because... Just yesterday, I was having some one-to-ones with some people in my mastermind who are very early stages in their business. They know they're good at what they want, that they what they do, but they haven't done it in this online space before. And there was a kind of theme coming up. Bear in mind, I talk a lot about getting visible and putting yourself out there, but you have to, at the end of that visibility, trust in what you have to offer so that you get the result. Okay, so it's a double-edged sword. There's visibility for visibility's sake isn't going to build you a business. No. 
No, you've got to trust in what it is behind you. But so many people, I think, are are at that stage where they don't want to go out and say the same thing. People, I've already done that. I've done a Facebook Live on that. I, I did a blog article on that. It's on my website. If people want to know that, they could go and find that. But that isn't the way it works mm. because you've got to show up again and again and again. And like you were saying, the consistency in your message is what draws people to you. That's why we're speaking today. I've been aware of Jules for a long time, a good couple of years, and that she was connected with selling and that it was a softer approach to selling. Maybe that's not quite how you describe it. That's my interpretation. But that doesn't mean I immediately, the moment I'm aware of you, reach out and say, let's do, let's get you on the show. It's not that. That's not how it works. It's seeing that someone shows up again and again and again and trusts and believes and continues to sell the thing that they're selling. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so important because that's how we work as humans. You know, it's actually not even just us saying this because it sounds right. As a chemical, whole chemical human reaction, it's how we connect. Our limbic brain, which is the oldest caveman part of our brain, is responsible for most of this. Do I think I need to run or shall I stay? I mean, that's really the ultimate. And that's all about, does it feel right? Is it consistent? Are they saying the same things? Does it match with my values? Yes. Then it starts to become, oh, I like this. And so much of that is subconscious as well. We're not even aware that we're thinking those things. No, we're not. But in order to be able to, you know, put the message out in the right way, that's the work we have to do. We have to be aware of what that means to us. What are our values? Mm -hmm. What's the whole reason why we want to do this? Not just to retire early and buy the yacht. You know, it's actually got to be a deeper purpose and belief, I think. Absolutely. And along the way, every business is going to have its ebbs and its flows, its rises and its falls. But if along the way, your focus is on building relationship, having a caring, nurturing element to what you're doing, whether you see that as educational or a part of the sales, but actually building real relationship, it's not just the end goal that becomes the purpose. Mm. The whole way along is that. I mean, I find this, and you must get this with your work as well, that it's not always the client who's worked with you for three months who's got the massive transformation. Sometimes it's the person who messages you because they say, oh, I saw this video you did, or I listened to that podcast, or I was in your Facebook group and you said this, and it made me think of this. Sometimes those moments actually mean just as much, if not more, than the big wins. Yeah. And And I know you've written a book, Anna. And so as an author, as a speaker, you know, these things do happen. A a complete stranger messages you and they say, you changed my life with that one sentence or you changed my life with that one paragraph. And you go, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. (laughs) Thank goodness. Thank goodness I wrote it. That's what I think. Thank goodness I was brave enough to write it. I actually have something very exciting to share with you, Jules. My second book, Podcast with Impact, I know arrived through my letterbox just as I was coming on this call. So as soon as we are, as soon as we're done here, my daughter's going to go and, uh, well, we're going to do a live as I open it. So that's my Um, second book, which goes out at the beginning of November, but I got the the paperback through this morning. My publisher got a copy this morning. Mine's just arrived. And again, it's that thing of if, if like with you, you Jules, if you don't write the content, if you don't do the podcast, if you don't write that heartfelt blog, if you don't do that Facebook live or write that post that means something, you can't get reaction from other people. No, that's so true. Because you're not connecting. Congratulations. That's amazing. I'm actually writing my second book. So I haven't got a published date yet. I'm writing it at the moment. So that's been a wonderful experience. And you're right. You know, I think I stopped writing my first book halfway through, Anna. And I Same. said to my writing coach, I said, no point me writing this. Everybody knows this stuff. Mm-hmm. Literally said out loud to her and she said, okay, have a month off. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's not that we're ever saying anything new. It's that someone needs to hear the message said in the way we're going to say it. Exactly. We rarely reinvent the wheel. No. What we do is put our perspective on it or our experience into Mm. it. And and that is often. And it's that story, that experience, those, that vulnerability that actually allows people then to build a better relationship with you. And I know it's almost a year. So my first book was published. 20th of November, which was a few days before my birthday. I wanted it done before my birthday. I couldn't have another year go by without having published this book. 
And the people that would reach out and say, you know, they'll never be customers of mine other than my, purchasing my book. But it doesn't matter because one person reads a book, they tell somebody else, they tell somebody else, and suddenly you've sold thousands of books. And But it doesn't, it's not even about those numbers. It's about changing that one person at a time and building that one potential relationship. And that's why it's your why as opposed to, you know, a get rich quick or a whatever you want to call it. Because those people are still important to you, even if they don't book you as a one-to-one coach. You know, yeah. they bought your book and they're going to talk about you. They're yeah. really important for you. They're your customers for life, you know. Yeah, it's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, actually, on that note, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the show. Maybe I have. So if you're listening, you've listened recently. My neighbour across the road, we'd not seen each other because of lockdown and what have you. And um, she came running out. She said, Anna, 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 I must tell you, my best friend who lives up north sent me a copy of your book and I read it all. And then I happened to put it down on the coffee table and realised that it was you. <laughs> <laughs> it had been sent to her from her new business partner who lives who lives in the north. I can't remember what town she's from. But That's it was right. really bizarre. Really That's bizarre. Right. <laughs> Those stories are the best stories. I, yeah. I, I just love them. You just don't know who you're going to reach and who's watching. And that's the thing I, you know, I think is really important for us to say is that you're always being watched, aren't you? Always. Yeah. And, and actually, I'm going to follow up with that is that there's a real common theme. And I see this with my teenagers particularly. There's a real common theme and in the online space of, oh, I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be judged. Well, we're always being judged. We make snap decisions as human beings. We can't help it. We are hardwired to do that. But what if you're showing up with heart, with care, with motivation and inspiration to do a good thing in this world and to change people's lives and to make people's lives a little bit better? What if behind the purpose of your work, you've got something that you love that you know will make a difference? And for me, thinking about that makes it 10 times easier to show up. Definitely. I totally agree with you. So Jules, if someone then really did want to get started with feeling good about selling, what would be the three things you'd say to them in how they show up? Well, the first thing is you've got to find out that real why. And I know we talk about this. This is a bit buzzy now, isn't it? Find your why, find your why. But it's true. You need to understand, as Anna's already said in this podcast, you have to know what it is that you love and your purpose and belief behind why you do what you do. I'd say that's one of the first things you need to be sure of. It gives you confidence. The second thing is be you. Be uniquely you. There's no other you on the planet. That's my biggie. And I think you should be proud to be uniquely you, right? No watching what you need to say. No worrying about whether that's okay. Be you. Obviously, be polite, but be you. That's that's really really polite. important. Yeah. Be you, but the but the nice version. But. Yeah, yeah. Be polite. You know, don't be rude on purpose. Be kind, but yeah, be you. That's so important. And I think the third thing is what we talked about again in the podcast is just consistently be visible. You've got to keep showing up so people know you, like you, trust you and talk about you and tell everyone else about you. Yeah, it's really important. And this doesn't happen overnight. This doesn't happen from a few months on social media. This stuff can take years, but it also doesn't have to take forever. You know, you could be living a very different life, having a very different business in a few years if you keep your consistent in your message and where you're going. So thank you so much for joining us today, Jules. So we've mentioned your book. How else could people come and find out a bit more about you? Well, I think if you just put in live it, love it, sell it into our beautiful friend Google, you'll find a lot of places that you can find me. And I also sent Anna a link tree link, which is one link with everything on it. So yeah. if you please connect, that would be amazing. I would really love that. Oh, well, thank you so much for coming on to Entrepreneurs Get Visible today, Jules. I hope you guys listening have really enjoyed today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneurs Get Visible. To get your free checklist on how to raise your profile and to find out about our community, go to annaparkernaples.co.uk forward slash get visible.